The only thing is, though, to me, if we switch now to talk a bit about Mad Lions, the final really, if you ever wanted to tell someone, like, what's the, go on then, everyone's hyping this Mad Lions team. Why should I watch them? Just watch this final and you'll immediately know why everyone's hyped. Because, dude, even the game they lost, they actually were, like, starting to do one of those mental comebacks. Like, this team, I know everyone's already made the comparisons on the other shows, which are all pretty apt, you know, like, G- Moscow 5, fucking G2 scenes now. But, like, the quality that they clearly do have is, like, man alive, this team just, it has no quit in them. They just think they can come back what do you think spoons of this squad i mean there's not much more to say that you know in that game too apparently armut was just laughing his ass off every 30 seconds just based on nothing during laning phase like the guy just has insane mental i guess i don't know what's going on there but the fact that you know coming back from a 10k goal deficit is already an insane thing to do oh, once but i think matt lions did it a total of four or five times throughout yes. the entire playoffs three of them being against rogue Yes. And it's it's just like the fact that they can do this consistently um, is just kind of insane in and of itself. Like this meta is obviously good for comebacks. We I think we saw that in the FPX EDG series earlier as well. Um, but Mad Lions just look like they are on another level in Europe in being able to do that. And I'm really excited to see what if they're able gonna if they are able to be uh, pulling that off against uh, world competition later this year. By the way, Wicked, you obviously literally played not only against Moscow 5, who had that like amazing quality. Like people famously used to always say, you know, like if they're behind, they just team fight and then they're ahead. Like it was ridiculous. And then your teams, obviously, it was, listen, it was a totally different meta, but your teams are actually notoriously good at comebacks. So what I want to know is, first of all, do you actually think, is the comparison in that sense too forced to the Moscow 5 thing? And then secondly, like, what do you think it is about, like, what, what does a team mentally have to have, do you think, to not break in the game when you're behind a lot? So, I mean, like, what, what your team needs to have is just happiness. Like, just be happy, keep the voice comes up, keep talking, because the problem is when it goes quiet, nobody stops thinking, and everybody's yes. like, okay, we're going to lose, we're going to lose. So, as long as somebody says something, even if it's stupid shit, right, it's going to help, right? And then the comparison, I think comparison doesn't really work, because back then, even with our team, we were good at coming back as well. The problem was, back then, you couldn't end games. There was no Baron yes. in the same sense, like Super Baron Minions. There yes. was no uh, Super Dragon Elder. And you couldn't end games. So we could just sit at the towers and be like, we just wave clear. We're going to have full items eventually, and then we're going to fight you, right? So we just wait out the game. But you can't really do that anymore. So completely different scenarios, I think. Sure. I have to say as well, even though, like, look, you could definitely break down the literal in-game examples of how they team fight, and they do find some, like, genius fucking concaves and angles. Mm-hmm. And ca- like, I, I should go without saying for any great team fight team, their target selection's mental, like, the carries always pop off. Like, it basically is everything you'd want. I even think, though, this is what's funny about them as a team. The difference is, when you contrast them, like, listen, we're already putting them in pretty rare air there, like, Moscow 5 and G2. Like, no, they're basically the best teams ever from Europe. Yep. The problem is this. They aren't quite at that level, because the thing is, those teams had every Thing. This team has this quality and they're unbelievable at it. But I even think there's a weird thing where, like, it almost makes sense when you watch them lane that they're not the best team in the lane in phase. And quite frankly, some of their players actually are at their best in the team fight. It's almost like that's the one area they've identified. That's, they play to their strength, basically. So it even makes sense they're behind some of the time, I think, Spoons. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things that um, exemplify that the most is, you know, regular season Armut would just sit in lane and not int, and he would come into team fights and just wreck everybody on Wukong, right? That's basically his thing. But I think, you know, in terms of Armut himself, he really leveled up uh, in playoffs. It's just he was smashing people left and right. He was beating Adam, who beaten literally everybody else. Um, but I think that cannot be said for the rest of the their teams as well uh, the rest of his teammates as well I think uh, the most glaring point is Karzi he's a very solid ADC you could say that he neutralizes enemy ADC sometimes um, neutralizes team fights that the enemy team is trying to do as well but he's not really a, a very flashy player in my opinion like he goes in and in sometimes that's about it uh, sometimes his ins work and wins the game but that is really rare and far between um, generally I feel Humanoid is about the same he just turns it on during team fights, but he doesn't really do all that much uh, in laning phase. So I agree that I feel like Mad Lions is more of a team fighting team, but they don't really have the same kind of individual prowess that the G2s or the Moscow 5s had in the past. Want to see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content? Well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.